when a copper rod and an iron rod are placed in salt water and connected with a wire, an electric current begins to flow. If a small light bulb is added to the wire, it flickers on because copper pulls electrons from iron, while the salt water acts as the electrolyte. Electrons move from the iron rod, through the wire, and into the copper rod. In this setup, copper becomes the positive pole and iron becomes the negative pole. That simple arrangement produces electricity. But since salt water isn't a strong conductor, the output is weak. The bulb only flashes a few times before going dark. To create a longer lasting source of power, dozens of iron and copper plates are stacked in alternating layers, soaked in salt water, and only the first iron plate and the last copper plate are left exposed as the terminals. Once the wire is connected, the device releases energy steadily. This configuration represents one of the earliest forms of a battery. But it turns out this design leaks easily and takes up too much space. To improve it, the iron and copper plates are pressed into thin sheets with salt water soaked paper placed between them, making the structure much more compact. To to boost the output, all copper plates are linked together with a copper wire, and all iron plates are linked with an iron wire copper running upward, iron downward. The entire stack is then wrapped in rubber or another waterproof material, leaving only the two ends exposed. With these refinements, the battery becomes compact, durable, and simple to manufacture. This structure paved the way for the evolution of modern batteries.